What's up, everybody? My name is Dell. This is Dell on Movies. Thanks for hanging out with me. And if you've been here before, thanks for hanging out with me again. And today is the day where we're going to talk about everything that I watched in the previous month, which is August of 2023. We're here right at the beginning of September. And I got a good deal of movies. I slowed down towards the end of the month, but I think I, I got a pretty good slate for us. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it because I don't want to uh, be here too long and uh, I do want to get through this so let's take a look at what we have watched and we are starting right at the beginning of the month I watched a movie called The Villainous and this is a uh, action movie uh, Korean foreign language it's a four-star movie for me and in in the movie, as you can see here, she's younger, raised as a killer in the uh, the Yanbian uh, province of China. So so yeah, she's raised one of those movies where the girl is raised as an assassin, and we meet her really as she's escaping this this place that makes assassins. Think of uh, think of the 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 place where they had all the widows in the in Black Widow, the movie, the MCU movie. I uh, think that it's a lot more graphic action going on and her escape is not facilitated by Scarlett Johansson. We got some other things happening, lots of crazy action. The opening, the the first uh, first person POV is amazing. So you have four stars for me uh, for the villainous. Next movie is a lot of nothing. Now, this movie didn't really work for me. And in this case, as you can see here, if you can see it here, it says hurt people, hurt people. I mean, let me highlight it, see if maybe that won't. Well, of course, that doesn't work. But anyway, we got it. It says upper middle class man, uh, upper middle class married couple find their lives spiraling out of control when they decide to take justice into their own hands and seek retribution against their neighbor. Their neighbor, what it doesn't tell you here, there. this is a black couple, as you can see, and the neighbor is a, a white police, police officer who has shot an unarmed black teen and they, you know, they decide that they've had enough of that kind of thing happening and they know the neighbor and he is, he's kind of a racist, he's a racist guy. So they decide they're going to, they're going to take him out. And of course things don't go exactly according to plan, which is why you get a whole movie out of it. It's an interesting concept with, you know, I, I can understand why you want to make a movie out of that concept that, it could be very a very good movie. I just don't think that they did the job. Uh, so two stars from me on a lot of nothing. Uh, next movie is we we get some M Night Shyamalan with Night Knock at the Cabin, excuse me. And similar to the movie we just talked about, guys, it's a it's a great concept, poor execution, uh, not really. It doesn't really work. It doesn't really come together, and that seems to be a lot of the issues with uh Shyamalan's filmography you know a lot of people love to say he's a terrible director I don't think he's terrible I think he has great ideas but fleshing them out into a complete story is problematic for him it's not, it doesn't always work out that way um sometimes he hits a lot of times he misses and I think this was really a miss it wasn't a terrible movie and sitting through it is interesting but you know there's a lot of holes you could probably poke in it so two and a half stars uh, for for knock at the cabin. Uh, after that, I watched The Exorcist with my daughter. Uh, she had never seen the movie before, and she's she's in college, so don't worry, guys. I'm not showing this to anybody that's really really young. Um, like I saw it, I saw it like eight years old. Uh, she thought it was okay. I think it's amazing. Five stars for me. No need to really go talking too much about the exorcist you be you at least have heard of the movie by now if, even if you've never seen it uh next movie i watched was sisu um i had a blast watching this one we we get this gentleman here who, who is a well you don't see his face on this picture but you see him here and yeah this is world war ii time and he's kind of searching for gold and right at the beginning of the movie he actually finds it and he's got a whole sack of it he's trying to just get get it to wherever he can to get the payoff and he comes across some Nazis. I mean, again, this is World War II. And they kind of in their way and not acquiescing to 
not acquiescing to just whatever they say. And so they're out to get him. And of course, they eventually find out about the gold, makes it even more interesting. A lot of people have compared this movie to John Wick. I understand the comparisons. So yeah, I would say those are pretty apt just in a World War II setting. And this is a pretty graphic movie. So just a warning for anybody out there who's not a gore hound. And so it's not a horror movie, but it is, it is very graphic. Uh, four stars for me for, for Sisu. Uh, next movie is There's Something Wrong with the Children. And this one is a... Oh, uh, let me see. Let's read it here. Margaret and Ben, they take a weekend trip with longtime friends Ellie and Thomas and their two young children. Eventually, Ben begin, begins to suspect something supernatural is occurring when the kids behave strangely after disappearing into the woods overnight. So, yeah, these kids, they go into the woods and they come back and they're, they're just doing all sorts of things crazy. Uh, again, another uh, really interesting concept for a movie. Um, I don't think it quite worked out the way I wanted to, but I did like the movie. I did so. I think the execution of it was better than Knock at the Cabin, for instance, or A Lot of Nothing. So it, it did work out where I actually did like the movie. But it, it's one of those where if you ask me, well, it's fine. So that would be three star uh, movie for me. Those where it's you know it's pretty good. No, nothing that's gonna blow your socks off or anything like that. Uh, next was a movie I did for uh, Movie Swap. I did a movie called Nine days uh with um stephanie from movie chatter so check out that movie swap i wound up giving three and a half stars uh on letterbox we talked about it uh in depth of course during that episode so i'll let you check that out i won't spend a lot of time there uh next movie was is, is barbie and you know what guys i can tell i you can see that it says three and a half stars right here and i've Thought about this movie some more. Thought about it a lot, and I, I'm gonna actually go ahead and up the score here. I'm gonna move that up to four stars for Barbie. Um, really enjoyed this movie. Uh, it's got it's got a lot to say. Uh, I, I do understand some of the criticisms for it because I have some of the same criticisms. Overall, I, I think it's a really excellent movie. Really funny movie. Um, pretty smart movie, and it takes uh, holds a mirror up to society. And also up to Mattel, though less so, it's kind of just poking fun at Mattel, which Mattel fully allowed, you know, knowing that they had a Barbie movie coming out. So they were fine with that. Um, Ryan Gosling stole the show for me. He was just amazing in the movie. Margot Robbie, because of because Ryan Gosling was so good in the movie and it's pretty easy to see, I, I think Margot Robbie might get a little bit overshadowed i know she's the the character who she plays the the, the title character but as performance wise her work is a lot more subtle than ryan gosling's but it is also very good it's also excellent work um even helen helen Mirren as a narrator which i'm not a big fan of narrators but i thought she that it, it was really good well used in this movie uh, my main complaint, which would keep it from going any higher than a four star movie, is that the messaging sometimes is heavy handed. So I, it's it's not where I'm 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 not one of those people who's like, oh, this movie is woke or whatever they, people want to say. And I'll talk about that another time, uh, because I actually like the messaging of the movie, but the delivery of it was sometimes a little overbearing. And sometimes sometimes movies do that. Uh, they're kind of spoon feeding the audience. So I, I didn't really care for that. They could have done it in a little more subtle manner. And in this case, they just had to, you know, one character or another just kind of look at the camera and just tell you, this is the message of the movie. And it, it can work because I do like movies like that. And I mean, goodness, I'm a Spike Lee fan. He, and he has done that in some movies. Um, but usually subtlety is the way to go when you're delivering your message. So in this case, it's not the message. It's just that the delivery is a little bit uh, too much at times. Overall, though, the rest of the movie, I laughed all the way through it and just really had a good time with it. So, yeah, four stars for me for Barbie. And followed that up with the other movie that I watched for Movie Swap with Stephanie. That was Coffee. Four stars for me there. Coffee is one of Pam Greer's best movies um, from the 70s. So you can, again, check out that episode and uh, hear my thoughts and Stephanie's thoughts because Stephanie had never seen the movie. Uh, next was a movie I was surprised that I liked as much as I did. 
Uh, this is Jerry and Marge go large. I, I was really expecting to kind of to hate this movie uh, because it just seemed, I don't know, it didn't seem like it, it was going to be anything that I would enjoy. And it's, it's hard to put into words what I'm actually well, we got Brian Craston's character here and his wife played by Annette Bening. They, uh, he has just retired and uh, they have a little bit of money, but it's not really, not a ton of money. And, but he's been careful all his life. And he also happens to be a mathematic genius. Um, and he figures out through one of the local uh, lottery games, he figures out that if you play it X amount of times, you're guaranteed to win and so he starts to do that and he starts to win and of course the more you win the more you more he plays and these these winnings are just growing and growing and growing so this story is about that this is uh based on a true story how true they you know how faithful they are to that i have no idea um but it was pretty fun pretty entertaining movie three stars so it's fine nothing that's gonna you know blow you away uh, but it was an enjoyable time, so I will. Uh, I'll, I'll watch it again if somebody. Hey, you want to watch Jeremy Arch Galar? Sure, why not? It was it's fine. Uh, next movie is one people either seem to love or hate, and I'm kind of in the middle on it. And it's plain, and uh, you know I want it so bad, it's awesome, but it didn't quite get there for me. And you know Gerard Butler, he's just not. He just doesn't do it for me, guys. I'm sorry. I know some. He's one of those guys that. You either really like or you really don't. And I, I love 300. I like Law Abiding Citizen. But most of his other movies, I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is so bad. And that includes the the um, the Olympus has fallen, the, that series. I, I'm not a fan of that series at all in any of those movies. Uh, the last one, I guess, was kind of OK. Um, in, in this movie, you know, he he's an airline pilot and they crash land on this island and you know, we got these bad guys coming out of the woodworks that want to kill him or rob him and do all sorts of things. And, you know, he's got this guy here, Mike Coulter, who played Luke Cage on the Netflix series, Luke Cage. And he's a convict who's being transported, but he also has military experience. So he's the only person that can help. And I, I hated his character because it was basically just a magical Negro, uh, just times a thousand <laughs> and and the rest of the movie was just you know I, I just didn't really care much for it and so I'm, I'm gonna be honest because as I'm, I'm talking myself out of this even two and a half it was it nah, where's the uh, edit again button so it was there it is okay it was not just not for me uh, so I, I'll drop it to a two-star movie not a two and a half so two stars for playing and i know there's people out there who love the movie it's you know it's got a lot of action in it and there's when you have a movie that has a ton of action in it there's always going to be people that you know oh man that was awesome and that's fine uh next movie is called backstroke and in this movie um a lot of these movies are movies that i probably wouldn't have watched and this was one of those my this was one of those my daughter you know, when she was home for the summer for, from college, she would put on these movies at night. And if I'm sitting there, I might just watch them. And this was one of those. This is Backstroke. And here it says, two runaway teens steal a car with dreams of driving down to Florida. But things take a turn when a stranger appears with unknown intentions. And this scene is pretty much right at the beginning of the movie. Um, we get a guy who is... Um, uh, he's done some things to her boyfriend. And she is kind of... She was in the in the water skinny dipping, and yeah, it, it's kind of it sounds like a slasher sl setup, um, and it's kind of a chase movie. Solid, decent movie, three stars. Uh, again, if you have nothing better to do, nothing to do, you're looking for something kind of interesting. That's one to to watch. Uh, next movie is one I watched for Movie Swap when I had on. Uh, Mel of My Killer Podcast, uh, she chose for me to watch Gleaming the Cube. Lots of 80s cheese here. So a three-star movie for me. If I, I would probably say like a 3.3, .3, not quite a three and a half or 3.2 stars maybe because it's a little, a little better than the movie I just talked about. Uh, but it was a lot of goofiness also. 
And it's one of those movies where if, if you see it young, you'll probably like it a lot better. Seeing it for the first time as an adult, it was like, ah, okay, that's it's fine. But you can, again, hear all my thoughts on, on that stream with Mel. Um, next movie is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I'm trying to remember how I came to watch this movie again. Um, I know it was really popular, really the talk of the town, so to speak, around time when Tim was doing the uh, top 25 of the 80 stream. But it wasn't that. It was uh, my daughter and I, we were, uh, oh, I know where we were. We were in, uh, like, I'm a teacher, some of you know, and students come back, you know, teachers are in there to kind of get in their classrooms together. And she was helping me. And in the classroom, we have, uh, we had a smart board and we were able to get Netflix on it. And she was like, hey, well, let's watch a movie while we're doing this. And I'm always down for that. We couldn't decide on what movie. I didn't want anything too crazy because, you know, I don't want my boss to come in and be like, what the hell are you watching? But so she was like, well, how about Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Because she was, she's aware of that. And I was like, okay, fine. And while Tim's stream was going on, I think some people got the idea that I hate this movie. I don't hate this movie. I just think Ferris is a terrible character. I do like the movie. Three and a half stars, solid movie, really good movie. Not one of my all-time faves or anything like that. Uh, this movie is, for me, always, always, always the the coming-of-age story of Cameron uh, Allen, as you can see, played by Alan Ruck, not of Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller is just a toxic friend. Uh, I, I've called him a villain. I don't know if he's quite a villain, but he's definitely a toxic friend. Three and a half stars for Ferris. Uh, next on the list was the other movie that I watched with Mel on our movie swap. This was Audition. A four-star movie for me, and you get to hear her thoughts when you watch that stream. So go ahead and check that out. Next was a trip to the theaters and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And this movie, guys, was fantastic. I, I'm 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 the person who when the when the turtles came out, when the turtles started getting really big, you know, I liked them, but I was older than the target audience for the cartoons and the video games. So I, I thought they were, you know, the, it was cool stuff they had, but it wasn't something I was like into. So when the first movie came out in 1990, uh, I believe, yeah, I believe it was 1990, you know, I was, I was like, yeah, hey, that's cool. You know, I, I had a good time with it. I, I'm not like su super devoted to the movie or anything like that. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I don't put that movie on a pedestal uh, or any of the movies in the series. Even though I own all of the Turtles movies, um, well, except the one, the one that just Netflix made. And I'll talk about that in a second. And even the Michael Bay movies, I don't hate them. One is a Michael Bay movie. I think he just produced the other. Um, I don't I don't hate them. They're not great, but I don't hate them. It, well, I take that back. The first one I might hate. <laughs> the... Next movie was a the next Turtles movie. Well, we had the TMNT animated movie, which I think is really underrated. And then we had the, the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is the Netflix series, and it was the movie. They made a movie, and I thought that was really good. I watched that a few months back, and at that time, I said that one was my favorite Turtles movies, and I know, you know, people's heads were exploding all over, you know, anytime they came across that. And I'm going to tell you now, this movie beats that one hands down. This movie is just fantastic uh they made the turtles like actual uh teenagers they, the, the teenage and teenage mutant ninja turtles is real here they are definitely like teenagers uh we had april was an another amazing character and i, I know that there's a lot of you know butthurt people out there that just just can't stand that they turned a white character into a black person and you know she got a lot of hate all over the internet and you know you people are crazy first off <laughs> but uh, my thing with that and i'll say this about her and about other characters if you have a, a a white character in a in a movie a tv show a comic book or whatever it is and whiteness is not a defining character trait then i'm okay with you changing the race of the character uh I'm going to sound biased or hypocritical because I'm, I'm I'm a little less likely to feel that way if you were turning a character, a person of color into a white character. But it can be done also. 
And and the reason is the reason for that seeming hypocrisy is, is we've got a hundred plus years of cinema where they you know over and over and over and over took uh, characters who were people of color and made them white for the screen. So I I think it's okay now if it starts happening back the other way, and but that all that aside uh, is really just to say that you know don't go into this movie biased against April because she doesn't look like the April that you're used to. Uh, she is a uh, she's a fantastic character and she is uh, every bit as uh, as a teenager every bit a teenager as the the turtles are. Uh, the art design I thought was really really good. In still shots, it's kind of hard to tell because uh, when I first saw still saw still shots of this, I wasn't quite sure what I was getting into. But then, you know, the, the trailer was like, "Oh, okay, I kind of see what's happening." And then when you watch the movie, what what it stands out is it's very clearly it's inspired by the spy art style is kind of in here. But they don't just do that. I mean, they, they definitely put their own twist onto it. It's got a more grimier feel, a grittier feel than on just about every other Turtles movie, um, which I really appreciate. And the character design, I also really appreciate because I'm a person, again, like I said, I was never into the Turtles. So I, believe it or not, I just always had a terrible time telling them apart. It was just four Turtles. They have different color masks, but I could never remember which guy had which color mask. And they all look the same here they look each one looks different they don't they have their own physical characteristics and they're along with their personality so I, I i think they did a really good job with it i know some people uh kind of writing this movie off before they saw it and i would suggest to those people to give it a chance go ahead and check it out and um i, I really really enjoyed it four stars i i'm i'm not gonna do it yet but i might bump this up to four and a half We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I'll probably maybe after I, after I get it on uh, 4K. Cause this is one of those kind of animated movies that I would get on 4K, even though I don't have to get those always on 4K. Um, this is one that I probably would because of the art design. So I, I really did uh, really do encourage people to go out and see it. Another animated movie that I watched. This one was I think. I think this was on Netflix. This is called Nimona, and I was pleasantly surprised uh, by this one. Three and a half stars. Um, we got this guy here. He was uh, framed, as it says here, night frame for a tragic crime. He was framed for uh, killing or trying to kill the queen, and um, he's run out of the kingdom, and he's on the run, and he wants to clear his name, and he happens to meet this person here, Nimona, and it turns out that Nimona is a shapeshifter, and a mischievous shapeshifter and again they go about trying to clear his name um it's uh i, I really had a good time with this movie so yeah three and a half stars on it I, I believe this is a netflix movie um this might be one of those ones that we watched at the, at the school while we were getting prepared uh after that we have the whiz now, The Wiz is a movie that I watched, rewatched actually, for my appearance on uh, the 4K Lowdown on on his channel, David's channel, and it was that appearance was about five of my favorite movies, and I gave him The Wiz to watch, and we had a good time talking about it. It's a four star movie for me, but it's one of those movies I, I will I'll happily admit that if you just kind of pick it apart a little bit or just try to dig into it it's kind of a weird movie and maybe not a four-star movie but I, one of those i've been watching all my life really nostalgic so i um it, it i always give it extra marks for that because i just i just really enjoy the movie uh next barbarians uh this was uh, as you can see i didn't really care much for this movie uh this one was one of those um there's been a lot of movies like this lately. This time we get a, 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 as it says here, I'll just read this part. A civilized dinner party in a country house sees four friends, Lucas, Adam, Chloe, and Eve, coming together for a birthday celebration. As the night progresses, secrets and lies force themselves into the light and polite pretensions are dropped. A knock at the door reveals three max intruders with an agenda of their own. I'll kind of stop there. Uh, yeah, 
they're just kind of in their house and it's like one of those super uh private futuristic communities uh, and one of the guys there not this guy here is this because this is one guy and his wife and there's another couple and the other guy he's he's like the real estate agent or something that sold them the property and it's like an exclusive area and then yet yeah, three guys with masks pop in pop in and all kinds of things start happening uh, again interesting just not done very well two and a half stars for barbarians uh next movie is a house on the bayou and this is another one where i i just didn't think it worked out really well and in this case you know we got here in an effort to reconnect and mend their relationship a troubled couple and their preteen daughter see seek an idyllic getaway to a remote mansion in rural louisiana but when unexpected visitors arrive their facade of family unity starts to unravel as terrifying secrets come to light and i'm reading it guys because I, I didn't enjoy it so i kind of forgot most of the things about this movie so uh, let's just suffice it to say two stars and move on from there another movie that i didn't really like but i do remember a lot more about and this is the oscar nominated film tar and um, I think Kate Blanchett won the Oscar for Best Actress. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. She was nominated. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, I, I've been hearing about this movie since a little before the Oscars when all the buzz started uh, popping up about this movie. And it's, you know, it, it's kind of like if, if I had to compare it to another movie, it kind of takes a similar tack to Black Swan. You know, we deal a lot with what's going on with with the main character mentally and, you know, all throughout her professional and personal life. Uh, she's a world, her character is a world-renowned conductor, uh, not based on a true story like a lot of people seem to think. Um, so it is completely fiction. Um, I just didn't enjoy the way it was put together. The pacing was just dreadfully slow. And then by the time we get to the end, it was kind of one of those, that's it. You know, that's all I get out of this. Was Kate Blanchett good in this movie? Yes, yeah, she was an excellent, and she did a, She gave an excellent performance. She, she was. I mean, that's just what Kate Blanchett does. And I don't think it was enough to elevate the movie for me. Uh, it, was, it was just, it, I was bored to tears. It was putting me to sleep. So two stars for me for Tar. So it's a movie that I... I kind of get why I got the nomination, but I don't get it at the same time because it will definitely not be one that I would say, oh, let's let's watch Tar. It's not going to happen. Uh, next movie was Shooting Stars, which is um, the movie about LeBron James high school basketball days. We follow him and his teammates who are all his really close friends. If you know anything about LeBron James. Um, you know, his, him and his guys are really tight to this day. You know, none of them made it to the NBA. They they all uh, stay in touch. Some of them work for him. And this is about their days playing together in high school. It's cute. It's, you know, Disney. Yes, it's not on Disney, but it's a very Disney-fied version of, of events, really. And so if you're a LeBron James fan, okay, probably watch it. It's, you know. It won't hurt, <laughs> but for me, it was just like, eh, whatever, two and a half stars. I maybe could bump it up to three, but for right now, I'm going to leave it at two and a half. If you want to see something about his high school playing days, that's a little bit better. Just watch the documentary more than a game. It came out 10, 12 years ago, maybe. Um, I, I thought that was really well done. This was just okay. A uh, little less than okay, even. Next movie is Creed 3 and I won't really go into depth on this one because I talked about it uh, I watched it the month prior maybe even two months prior but when I went to theaters this time I just put it on because my father-in-law was over he hadn't seen it so four stars there still next is the Netflix movie Heart of Stone uh, Gal Gadot Gal Gadot I'm not sure 100% how you say her name I, I hear it both ways I'm just gonna find a video of her saying her own dang on name. That's what I need to do. Uh, this is an action movie, uh, kind of a James Bond-esque kind of movie. Uh, it really is more, it, it, it seems more like Spy, the Melissa McCarthy movie, but if that movie wasn't a comedy, 
So if it took itself kind of serious, it was it kind of seems like that a little bit. Um and maybe I'm I'm oversimplifying or just flat out wrong. Uh, but it, they're really trying to set her up for a franchise with this movie, it feels like. And it, it, again, it, it was just okay. I, I don't hate it like a lot of people do, um, but I can definitely see that, you know, this is not something that uh, sh- should really spawn a franchise. Like It's just okay. Three stars for me, Heart of Stone. I'd watch it again if somebody else put it on, but I'm, it's not something I'd be like, hey, you know what I want to see? I want to see Heart of Stone. Um, as far as her, I honestly don't think she is the greatest actress in the world. Just, I think she's actually pretty weak as far as, you know, if we're talking A-listers, I think she's on the lower end um, as far as ability goes. But I also think that Wonder Woman was a character that was tailor-made for her. So she's really good in as Wonder Woman and not so good everywhere else. Here she wasn't terrible. Um, just the movie was just kind of cliche and thought it was a lot more clever than it was but three stars again next movie i watched was big george foreman um i grew up as a huge boxing fan a huge even bigger muhammad ali fan um so this was a i'm very well familiar with with george foreman as a boxer not as a grill salesman i'm very familiar with him as a boxer and i I wanted to see this because i wanted to get uh, well, I wanted to see what's, what's going on with George Foreman. And I, I think part of the problem with this movie is George Foreman might have been uh, too involved, <laughs> to be honest, or him. And I don't know that for a fact, but it just feels like that. And we, we do get, it's not one of those where it just glosses over all of his faults, but it, it kind of skates over things a little bit. So it'll bring something up, but then we kind of, you know, skating by it. And I, I didn't think the performance of, of our lead actor was all that great. He was solid in some parts, but it, it, he was just kind of iffy. Um, and then the director I, I made some terrible choices because if I'm watching the movie for about three quarters of the movie, I'd probably have it at three, maybe even three and a half. And then the third act happens or not even the whole third act, but like the last half of the third act. That's why I said three quarters. And the director just made some, to me, just wild decisions that I, I just could not fathom uh, happening in a big time Hollywood movie such as this. And I know this wasn't one of those 200, $300 million budget movies. I know that, but this is a director, you know, George Tillman, who's done a lot of good stuff. I'm clicking on him just so you can see some of the stuff that he's done. And the hate you give really good movie. I, I don't think I saw the longest ride. Man of honor is an awesome movie faster with the rock was pretty good. Notorious, the B I G uh, the notorious B I G movie was good. Uh, soul food solid movie mr pete mr and pete i think i no i didn't see it so i i might have seen pieces of it um and i don't know what this is the defender so some good movies that i've seen from this director so he's a capable guy so these decisions were baffling and i'm, I'm gonna just tell you what the decisions were so spoiler kind of sort of you know, it's a boxing movie, so you got to work towards the victorious climax. That's just the way boxing movies work, 90% of them. You know, there's some outliers, and they're usually really good, but we're working back to when he's fighting for the heavyweight championship as an older guy. If you're not familiar with George Foreman, he fought in the Olympics in the late 60s. I think it was in the late 60s he fought in the Olympics, maybe early 70s. He became a pro, and he became heavyweight champion by beating up on Joe Frazier. And then there's the historic fight that he lost to Ali, disappeared from boxing for over a decade, and came back looking like this guy pretty much, and, you know, 40 years old or so, and trying to win back the heavyweight championship of the world. And there are reasons for that, and they go into that in the movie. I won't do it here. So he gets back to the point where he's going to fight for the heavyweight championship again. Okay, so I said all that to get to the decision part. So the decision, the decision of the director, 
or whoever was in his ear that he listened to. Throughout the movie, they've been just reenacting the fights with actors. Perfectly fine. Not a problem. I, I respect that totally. I, I prefer that. We get to this fight, and instead of doing that, they take actual fight footage and basically superimpose this dude's face onto George Foreman's actual body. And it is the most terrible, just crappy, you know, middle, middle, middling performing high schooler job you could imagine. It just looks horrible. And, and this is the centerpiece of your movie, really. This is pretty much the climax of your movie. And I, I don't know who decided that that was a good idea. Uh, in another scene, uh, another scene, I think before that, they, um, they what they did was they showed the actual fighter like doing commercials or something. They showed the actual fighter that that George Foreman was gonna fight like doing commercials or, or something like that, and then reenacted that fight with the actors. So you have a completely different guy being who he was uh, being the guy in the commercial. So it, it it just really took me completely out of this movie. So that's what drops it down to two and a half stars for me. I, I know that's a long explanation probably for a movie that I didn't like that much. So that's Big George Foreman. And then the last movie I watched of the month uh, was Blowout. Watched it for the very first time. Um, at the time I'm recording, this is really like right after a movie swap uh, that I did with Movies and Train Studios. So we talked about this movie in depth. Three and a half stars for me. Really solid movie. Really enjoyed this. John Travolta, Nancy Allen. Of course, Brian De Palma, uh, the director. Uh, the other movie that we did on that show, I actually didn't watch until September. So I'm going to save that for next month. That is all the movies that I watched for the month of August. Uh, let me know what you thought of any of these movies, if you've seen them. And uh, let me know if something you want me you should, that I should stay away from. And I'm always cool with those too. Uh, so really let's, that's all I have for you on this one, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all those YouTube things and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.